Welcome to the Black Spray Hood podcast. Today we are chatting with Gilson Maoka. Is that correct? Or Maosha? Maosha. 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 Yes. A Cabo Verdiano or Verdense? Well, you got C Cabo Verdiano, yeah. Cabo Verdiano, Raymarine certified dealer and technician and also multilingual uh, enthusiast, <laughs> I can say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, enthusiast is quite a good word. <laughs> we are in Mendelo, uh, Cabo Verde, and we are getting ready to cross the Atlantic. Uh, we have uh, we have been trying to get our water making installer since we've been traveling through Europe, and it seems to be like really hard as everyone is busy. So uh, Cabo Verde was actually our last last hope for this. As soon as we arrived, Gilson was recommended as the man for the job. A few hours later, I was looking for a Raymarine technician to help us with an issue that I want on our chat plotter, and Gilson was once again the guy recommended for the job. While I was waiting for him at the shop in Mandelo, his colleague was praising him uh, to a group of French people, saying that Gilson could speak French. Then he told me that Gilson could speak English, so Stephanie could make part of the conversation. Later, we will find out how many languages he actually speaks. So we got to know Gilson more as he and his colleague Edmar came to work on our boat to install the water maker. We had a good chat and learned some laughable stories. They are not necessarily funny, but were made light by Gilson's charismatic way of telling it. We would like to thank you very much for taking part and then, you know, thank make some time to come and talk to us. Yeah, thank you, me. It's really good opportunity as well. It's uh, I really like what I'm doing, and uh, I think I do it for my heart. It's it's a basically a passion. I like to sail as well, so I try to do as I really I would hope someone would do it for me. So basically, that's it. So um, we know that you're multi-skilled on the boat. You've got lots of different hats, you're a welder, electrician, you yeah. can do everything. What's your favorite kind of work to do on a boat? Something that challenged me actually. It's not about favorite uh, skill, it's about something that I never done. Something that uh, a customer, for example, a customer show up with a problem that first he thinks it's not possible that he would do it here and then it's not possible to be done uh, with the boat on water for example and then we come up with a solution to do it. So it basically I tried to bring the, um, bring the impossible to become possible. So yeah. that's what really motivates me. And as hard as it is, then I have to, of course, I have to sleep, uh, sleep as night that, try to think into a solution, and then come up with an idea how to fix the problem. Because for me, it's about, you have an issue, you have a problem, and I'm here to bring the uh, solution for it and as the logo said well, wrong shirt <laughs> <laughs> wrong shirt as the, normally the company logo says it's if it's man-made we can fix it and I try to live by, by, by that uh, by that saying so if it's something that is made by man and uh, if uh, it's only a matter of try to think about and get a solution and that's it if I get a solution then I can fix it so mm. if I can understand it, I can fix it. That's the whole idea. Yeah. For context, Gilson's just been diving in a boat, so <laughs> he's had to go and get changed. Yeah. But normally he's wearing the boat CV yeah, uh, exactly. logo. So how, how did you start working with boats? Well, I was uh, supposed to be an architect. So when I finished school, uh, secondary school, and then uh, I was uh, applying for a university to be an architect, and then my father died. So because of that, I had to sustain my family and I had to come and work instead of going to university in this case. So I start as a trainee in that uh, time. First, I, before, even before starting a trainee, I started as um, doing civil constru uh, civilian construction like uh, as a um, helper. And then I saw at the school when I went to get my documentation, I saw at the school that the company, both of was we're looking for trainees so I applied and they choose me on a program of trainee for six months and then uh, after six months I was hired uh, by the company and since then that's been 15 years now oh, wow. yeah. and did you do your training here in Mindelo or did you travel yeah for initially all my training was based in Mindelo for the first uh, six months two years and was in Mindelo and then I had to go to UK to get certified by Raymarine and then uh, from Raymarine I also came back get 
also more uh, more knowledge by doing things and then I start uh, I make a big step on welding as well so I got certified also by uh, welding so now I'm, I'm a Burio Veritas certified welder and uh, also we by the meantime we met the Furuno guys and also the uh, um, BNG a uh, representative in Mindelo, we start working for them, so we have kind of a partnership as well. So, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, officially I'm a certified uh, Rimarine dealer and a certified welder, aluminium welder. Oh, that's yeah. great. So, what about languages? Like, the, that was the first thing that we learned about you that you could speak different languages. How did you learn them? Talking. I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> I well, it's it's all about I talk too much even in my native language people some people that are picky with me normally says I talk too much and even my wife says I talk too much I guess that's true because I know that I talk too much it comes from family <laughs> so uh, but it's for me it's about uh, meeting people you know get sharing experience sharing my life I don't have normally I don't have a wall between what is my life what is my profession I try to be always transparent so like an open book and uh, normally it's not uh, rare that you will find me telling something true about my life that normally you would consider mm, that I would save for me as private. I'm an open book in general. Mm. So I try to talk with people and as better as the conversation then I can open more and then we can talk more, you know. It's then also in order because I believe it's uh, trust is something that I have to give first and then I will receive. It's not that way around. If I close, people won't open to me as well. So mm -hmm. I try to be as clear as possible and then people will do the same to me. So that's it. So what languages do you speak? I speak more or less English. <laughs> yes. I speak English, I speak French, I speak Spanish, a little bit of Italian. I'm learning German so it doesn't count. <laughs> and uh, also Chinese doesn't count. So <laughs> the ones I really speak is uh, English, French, Spanish, Portuguese, and my native language is Creole. So five language. And wow. you told us that there are different forms of Creole on the different island. The fourteen islands that uh, make up Cape uh, Yeah, we have uh, ten islands actually. Oh. And the uh, yeah, it, one is uh, inhabited. It's uh, Saint Lucia. It's uh, a preserved island. So uh, it's natural reserve, but uh, we have uh, nine islands that are habitated, and uh, each island has its own variant of Creole. For example, to give an example, from Samuan Town to Mindelo. I'm native. I'm uh, originally from Samuan Town, but I live in Mindelo since my 40 years old. And uh, there is a l where you go inside, more inside the island. Uh, into the small village, you will find that the the uh, native language that we speak Creole, it's more deep considered to Mindelo, for example. That, for example, for ordinary words like bread, same as I think as we thought, for uh, Mindelans we will say pound, but for uh, a, uh, uh, someone that lived between the mountains, he will say pon. Mm. So you have a really deep accent on some words there. Mm -hmm. And for and if I compare Mindelo to Praia, it's totally totally like almost like a different language because of Praia is quite um, the way they speak. It's actually very very fast, and uh, but uh, even me for example, if they speak it too fast, I have to say wait, calm down, go back again and uh, say what you want to see. Then I can understand. But if they speak very fast, for example, let me try to get a word. That would give an example of how different the the variant are. Um, for example, I would say uh, work. That uh, we say here uh, trabalhar. That would be the same as Portuguese as well. Or traboy. In Creole, we would say traboy. They say trabaja. Uh. So these kind of things you will have on different uh, variation on Creole. In uh, Sunny Cloud, you also have. A mix. I think Sunny Cloud would be basically a mix of a uh, the sound is sound Vicente and not a, not necessarily a mix, but just to and uh, as an explanation because Sunny Cloud also has his very particular way to speak, but uh, it would be more smooth compared to Pry as well 
but also you would find difference between Mindelo and Sunny Cloud on the intuition that they give on the world. For example, they would say, if you would say uh, Subir para cima or Subir para arriba in Creole, in Portuguese would be Subir para cima, or in English would be going up. Yeah. For uh, in Sunny Cloud, they would say Subir para loa. Okay, yeah. Deeper low, so it's a completely different world. Mm, yeah. And for the first time I arrived in uh, Sunny Cloud, I know a few things that they would say, but I was like, oh. <laughs> so for me, what, the first time I traveled around Cape Verde as well was kind of a uh, uh, experience that I almost know ten, uh, ten different, well, nine in this case, because one doesn't talk. <laughs> so. Uh, Ten different, uh, nine different islands with very specific variant of Creole. Are there differences in the culture between the nine inhabited islands? Yes, there is. Uh, for example, Carnaval is something basically from Mindelo. Now there is other. Uh, there also Carnaval in San Nicolau, and they are a uh, promotioning now a Carnaval in Praia in Santiago. But uh, Mindelo starts the culture of Carnaval. And the San Nicola also has a very specific type of carnival. It doesn't even compare to the type of carnival we have in Mindelo. Mm. So the Mindelense carnival and the San Nicola actually are the oldest. Mindelo have the oldest uh, carnival here. And uh, but because the uh, influence from outside, especially from Brazil, in telenovelas, for example, is quite high. So that also brings a lot of things that we can, because Ca Cape Verdeans in general is, uh, we have a, the identity, if I would try to bring it into one word, I mean, that would be hard actually, because it's mostly how we live, so it's really hard to describe it in a word, it's mostly people want, in Mindelo for example, they want to have a, uh, to have fun, they have uh, music and culture, so that is it's natural that you would find every uh, weekend you would find uh, close to the the beach that we have a um, we have a 15 minute walk we have a beach there and you would have lots of uh, small bars doing live music for example Cesare Evra started over there mm. and uh, all of the elder singers that we have mostly the elder singer died but they really made a career and they started singing on the local bars and Is that La Ginia Beach? La Ginia Beach, exactly. Yeah. So and uh, in Santiago, in uh, Santiago, for example, then they would have something that we call batuk, for example. Batuk, it's a uh, it's a tradition of uh, that uh, you will have. Uh, it's like a circle of women, only women. It's a few times I've seen men there, but basically women, and then they have uh, basically a, a small bag of things inside I never knew what they had inside to be honest mm -hmm. but they had, and then they would play like this so basically drumming yeah exactly drumming and people singing oh. but mostly improvisation so if someone uh, disturbing them they would send a clear message to that guy that is disturbing them on that music without losing the rhythm and all this wow. and uh, that. yeah that's really good and uh, I will send you some videos about it but if you get a chance I would see if there is possible to get in Mindelo if you stay long enough. Mm -hmm. Compared to San Juan town, for example, the island I came from, mm -hmm. we have San Juan or San Juan, the Saint John. It's a party of Saint John that's really big in San Juan town. Actually, that's the only island that really makes uh, a party of San Juan. We call it in San Juan town. We say San Juan. It's not San Juan. So that's also because of the variant of the Creole, uh -huh. and uh, that will be three days a uh, party one will go to uh, the, it will start going to uh, a place called Ribeiro das Patas to get a saint then bring the saint to Porto Novo doing the party there it's basically a party between um, drums people uh, you know, all related to having fun and then church so it's party related to church because it's a saint and then will the last day would take the, the Saint back to the uh, Rebelas Padres and by walking. And is this the Catholic Church? Catholic Church, yeah. 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 We are a state of lakes, so we don't have exactly a religion on the, our, uh, on our, uh, in Cape Verde in general, but uh, it's basically, we are tolerant to all religions. We have, 
we have the Muslims, we have uh, Christians, we have uh, Jews, we have um, the, uh, the Pentecost, and basically it's all church. And now with COVID and also with problems with Cape Verde, have a really uh, 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 really high uh, rate of alcohol uh, problems. All the churches or different religion combine to uh, into a, a meeting there and to send a message to people not to drink, take vaccines and all these kind of things, you know. So in general Cape Verde is very tolerant related to religion, political, it's very stable as well, even if it's not happy, but it's very, very stable. So, yeah, so I think like people in London, they're not going to understand what I'm saying now, but basically I saw, I saw the logo of the, the Brazilian evangelical um, church is yep. it something that has a big influence in here? There is, yeah. I know even more people that has uh, lots of uh, um, that are frequenting. Uh, um, it's actually uh, yeah. How we call that church? I forgot. Uh, so one yeah, from, like, uh, the the uh, or something. Reino, yeah, yeah. Reino yeah. If uh, more time is passing, we have more people going to uh, the uh, Evangelic mm. I have uh, lots of. I have few friends that are frequenting them, so. Me personally, I'm a Christian, so I'm not going at the church as much I would wish to. I would like to go, and uh, but I do believe in God, and uh, but I respect all the ones, all the other religion. You can believe in Buddha, you can believe in Allah. Doesn't matter what is your belief, you can believe in Si. For me, it's basically maybe for me maybe it's just a different word for the same thing that I believe. So my thing, I respect yours, respect mine, and that's it. So we all friends. Yeah, I was going to do more um, like questions related to the Baltimore world, but I can come back to that later because we've been talking about carnival. Um, I know that you have different celebrations, you have different carnivals in here. Could you explain a bit for us? Yeah, well, it's not exactly different carnivals, but we have uh, we have the main carnival that is also in uh, February, and uh, it actually it's uh, almost in sync with the Brazilian carnival. Because when we finish our carnival, you're getting the results or on our way around as well. So, uh, but uh, our carnival here, it's uh, a mix of what we used to do basically in day lives. It's often to find people even almost naked on the streets do, celebrating carnival, for example. And some, lots of drink peop uh, drunk people as well doing uh, stupid stuff, but also funny stuff. And we have a saying, it's carnival, so nobody takes uh, uh, the bad side. Yeah. So, uh, but in Carnaval in generally, for example, in uh, in summer we have a Carnaval that's more for the to show. It's about showing, especially for the immigrants that didn't have the chance to get Carnaval, and also did the the, um, the uh, tourists also that are here to get a chance of having Carnaval as well. And uh, but the main Carnaval is in uh, February, and it's basically three day uh, two days Carnaval. One would be a presentation of Samba Tropical that is not particip it's not a competition, it's only group uh, going. And then the next day will be all the official groups participate on Carnaval and everybody try to present his best work related to a team that they, uh, uh, they will have find out uh, what they will want to represent that year and then work all around this. And uh, we had last year, if not last year, we had COVID. <laughs> but uh, the last carnival we had, we had uh, carnival, we had one group that represented the uh, cultural of K of Cape Verde in general, Morna, Coladera, all the musicians and all this. We had also groups that represent Africa. Uh, we have a group that represent part of the sea and uh, wonder of the the universe. So it's about a dream, basically. It's a dream world, and you want to present as much as you can and have as much fun as you can, basically. That sounds really fun. It is, it is. And then we have Mendingas. It's nothing related to Carnaval. In, it's in the Carnaval season, but it's not about being dressed with uh, lots of colors, like, uh, like you have in Carnaval, with really nice fancy dresses and all this. Mendingas is all about having fun and, and uh, going to the nature. So it's a, man, a cultural manufacturing that people normally will paint their body in black with uh, with uh, uh, oil, sometimes uh, vegetable oils, and 
Sometimes with the uh, poison oils are like engine oils. Uh, really? Yeah. So now they are trying to surpass that. But uh, in the beginning, they started with uh, with the, the batteries from the from the from the you know the small batteries that you put on your cameras. Well, uh, not yes. cameras like this, yeah, no, yeah. No, but the uh, small batteries like AA, for example. Sorry. Yeah. And then you would uh, smash them, yeah. put it with water, and then <gasps> paint really? your body on black. Wow, that and, means quite. Uh, yeah, and then you would have. They, yeah, yeah they would have. That's awesome. I mean, that uh, there has a bit of radiation, isn't it? Yeah, they have, but people, information, for example, technology uh, comes far later in Cape Verde than in all around the world. And uh, also it's about the, uh, the opportunity that the, pers the ordinary person get to get some information. So the delay time, sometimes they, they are applying something, but they don't, want, they don't find out that it's, if it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. They just do it by the purpose, the purpose that they want to have. I want mm -hmm. to be painted black, so I would paint completely black. What I would do? What was yeah. the things? So uh, they didn't actually think about the radiation of, for example, for oil. The, uh, the yeah. chemic that you have there, it can really, it's really dangerous, you know. Yeah. But uh, now, fortunately, with, uh, also with help of Brazil, mm -hmm. on this case, they presented more environmental friendly and more skin friendly mm -hmm. uh, yeah. products that they can do basically the same thing, but not to harm their health. Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah, talking about environmentally friendly um, and going back to the boating world as well, I can see that the locals are like, they have like like really conscious about the environment. It's funny, we we in the marina now, and then most yeah, I think the majority of people here are like foreigners like us. They're all foreigners. And uh, we've seen some some weird like you know uh, attitudes, and and we found something like really weird as well. I think for the first time I've seen it, we saw like human waste basically. You it's know? hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like 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 the, the this object like. It's floating. Yeah, it was floating <laughs> next to our boat. So um, it was disgusting. Yeah. So so anyway, like, um, is it only us, or is it something that you have noticed? Like, what, what what do you think that makes people find that it's okay to trash for the people's country? Uh, it's quite a hard question. You know, it's. I think it's all about the um, what you learn as a kid, and uh, and then when you are a grow up, if you have good values, then you would you would do. Or you wouldn't do certain things, and uh, in this case, for example, that's actually quite natural sometimes to find the uh, some dirt floating around, you know. And unfortunately, because we have toilets at the marina, yeah. obviously, so they could go there and do what they have to do. But uh, they decided to do the boat because maybe they like the boat too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's really about the uh, conscience and the. Uh, if they, because I don't think someone that would go in the toilet on his boat and make an, an enormous poop there, and then it would be float. He would think about it would be float after he, he did the discharge. Mm -hmm. So they just don't care. Sometimes they just don't care, and also sometimes we found really good people as well, like you guys. <laughs> oh, so that uh, so it's all about this, and in, in Mindelo as well, we have. Uh, we try to be environmental, environmental friendly, but still we're not even where we can be. Yeah. But we are working towards that, and uh, the uh, and the new generation, for example, as my kids, I have two kids. My kids, I try to teach them exactly not what not to do to pollute your environmental land because there is no planet B as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to take care of this one, and that's it. And uh, for the new generation, that's basically the message. It's taking care of what we have, not expecting that someone miraculous will find a place to live. This is, and if they found, it's not for all of us. <laughs> and, and just to like chalk our friends, like, do you mind uh, repeating the story about the divers? They told us. Uh, the about work some, I was someone using the toilet. Ah, uh, yeah, out. yeah, yeah. We had this time then the. A guys from a boat, they hired uh, a guy to uh, to uh, clean the hull underwater. So the guy was there cleaning the hull. You know, it's actually the clean the hull is not easy as it is. 
but as it looks like, especially if you have to really clean it. One thing is go and scrap a little bit, one thing is really clean it and get paid because if the owner dives and he found the boat is not completely clean, he will have problems to pay. So you, if it's paying for clean, it's really clean. And that takes about two hours, two and a half, three hours, depending on people and depending on the boat. But one time we had a case that a diver, they hired a diver to go and clean the hull. And the guy is there, clean the hull, and then suddenly he sees a huge mark of kind of stain area there around it. And we obviously knew that was someone was using the toilet. But I mean, you hire someone to go under your boat and then you go into the toilet and you press a discharge on shit around him. <laughs> it's not bad, it's not good. That's not fun, so try not to do that, please. <laughs> oh, so yeah, so for me, like the, the reason that I took offense with some of the attitudes I have seen is that even though so little about uh, Cabo Verde, uh, as a Brazilian, as soon as I arrived, I felt I felt the connection. You know, I feel I feel like I feel like I'm I'm in Brazil. You know? Having said that, we had the chance to check uh, to check out some live music, and a big part of every musician playlist were like Brazilian music. Uh, do you like Brazilian music? What do you think about it? Of course, I mean, all kids very like Brazilian music, and uh, that's also why we have Carnival. I think it's basically because of that. And uh, there is a song from Cesaria Evra that says that uh, Cabo Verde é um Brasilzinho. Oh, really? So it's okay, very, it's a small Brazil, and that's on the song that is sung by Cesaria Evra, our diva. That's unfortunate. It's not between us now, but. She's immortal because of what she did. So music is immortal. So until then, and the uh, as she said, the influence in Brazil in in Cape Verde is really really big, and uh, it will start with telenovelas with the musicians, and then uh, it will go even to a small uh, cultural manufacturing, for, and also sports. For example, I did. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this before, but I did more than uh, twelve years of capoeira. Oh really? Ah. Wow. Yeah, and uh, and uh, our master is a Brazilian guy. So uh, and what everything that I learned regarding capoeira, we had the chance to get lots of also uh, lots of master in capoeira that came from Brazil and all around the world, but Brazilians. And in one case, we had one uh, that was a, a professor of capoeira from uh, if I'm not long, uh, wrong from Holland. He was not a Brazilian, but all the rest was Brazilians. And sometimes we have a, a cruiser ship with you know with lots of tourists, mm -hmm. and there is some Brazilian master there doing capoeira on the ship. They, every time they pass through, they come to say hi, and say mm -hmm. hi in capoeira is basically playing capoeira. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and that was basically really big time of my life. And uh, because of capoeira, I become a gym. A, kind of a gymnast, I also get an uh, invitation to go for Switzerland for a presentation, did not go, unfortunately, or fortunately, but, uh, and uh, because it's, I got passionate for all the surrounded capoeira and Brazilian culture as well, so it's very often you find uh, on local uh, bars here, lots of samba or pagodji, and we have a really good uh, the singers here doing pagodji on local here, even Marina, they mm -hmm. come. They, I think it's on tomorrow. Also, lots of Brazilians, the uh, professional singing on, re, on top of the class like Zeca Pagodinho and the uh, Anita, uh, Daniela Mercury. Correction, not Anita, but uh, Ludmila uh, Funky, also oh, okay. related. And uh, but lots of big musicians was here, and uh, during all this time in Cape Verde to sing in our local festival. We have a really huge festival in Mindelo. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a festival of uh, Bahia das Gatas. It's a music festival. And that we are bringing uh, singers from all around the world when we can, when mm -hmm. we can afford as well. And uh, Brazil is our main. Every time we have a festival, we have to have a Brazilian singer here or Brazilian group. Have you guys ever bought like so Jorge? So like everywhere I go, like I hear like so Jorge. I wish, I wish yeah. we would have. Not yet, but I'm pretty sure we will have because we got some uh, some uh, very close friends to Sir Jorge, 
and the vibe that we transmit to our singles as well here it's i think uh, if they talk with him and if we make the offer i'm pretty sure if the agenda is good he would come I'm dying to watch like a film uh, that he, he have just done, uh, Maringella. Yeah, yeah, me uh, too. So I was looking online, like, do you, you, you have like cinemas in here? In, not anymore. We had actually, cinema was uh, something that really helped Mindelo. That's also part of the way we think as well. Because uh, by watching movies during lots of decades, uh, we get to have, to ambition more as not just what we had here, but to work for more. And the uh, Keyvordian is about this, and uh, the uh, the logo of Keyvord is unity and uh, work hard. So, mm -hmm. and it's all about that. And uh, so, people want they saw something on the cinema, and maybe they want that, so they will work themselves out to try to get it. And uh, the uh, port and uh, the cinema that we had, unfortunately. They closed several years ago, but now things are changing and they're talking about bring, uh, building another cinema. So I really hope because it's really part of the culture in Mindelo. And all Mindelans feel uh, sorry for what happened to the oldest one and they are waiting for a new one. A new one. Yeah. Crossed. Yeah. Hope yeah. your cinema wasn't the, the cinema they used to have. I, I really hope that wasn't bought by the. Igreja Universal do Reino de Deus. Because no. like you said, I, I respect religion as well, but I used to get really annoyed with them because they used to buy all the, the cinema theaters yeah. and then a lot of cinema closed and it's, uh, it's quite yeah, quite Yeah, I have my own complaints as well regarding the, uh, the, the, the church itself. It's not exactly related to the, the, the religion, it's about the church. The methods, yeah. yeah. It's how they do, you know, it's basically, I don't believe any church that you have to bring part of your salary demand, actually, it's yeah. if you do freely to help people, that's good and we should all, all of us should do the same, try to help our friends and the ones in need. But uh, if you're demanding money to be on this church, I wouldn't take that as a good church. Related to religion, I respect all, but I don't respect even in Christian as well. There is bad stuff in Christian, there is bad stuff in Reino de Deus. And if you're not seeing it, it's because maybe you are part of the scheme or you are blind enough. So if you are going to a church or if you are a part of any religion, I would say, it's all about the love, it's all about what you can do to others, because I believe what you can do to others will also multiply in favor to you. It's all about being happy in life, not mugging around, you know. And uh, if you are just taking your money and you're still unhappy, it's not giving more money that will save that. When you, you mentioned that when you used to live with your mom, she used to have cats, like uh, how many cats did she have? Nines and a dog, nine cats and a dog. Nine, uh, could, yeah. can, can you name all the nine cats? Oh, it's been so far. I mean, more than ten years now. We had Branca. Try four. Try four. Well, we had Branca. We had Pintada. We had uh, a Tigresa, and uh, but there's one that ah, uh, it's really been way too much time without cats. Ah, and also was my uh, my mom's cats, but uh, we had a uh, Branca, Tigresa, a uh, Pintada, and ah, uh, 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 Pritinha. Pritinha. Okay, so so at the end of every episode, we we do like a silly question. So if you if you could take the your mom's cat your mom's cats to to a carnival, which costume would you give to every one of them? But like, but you need to name three. them. Uh, <laughs> nine is a lot. No nine, I said four. But like, oh, you yeah, can okay. be three, yeah, three or four. Yeah. Three custom to a cat. Yeah. The first thing I would dress for sure, I would dress one of the cat as a dog. <laughs> which one? Probably Pretinia. Oh. And, uh, she, because of, uh, ah, we had another one that was called Mutant. Mutant? <laughs> yeah, part of the uh, influence of the telenovelas in Brazil. Oh, right. Yeah, you, you have, in Brazil there is uh, a telenovela a few years ago that was called Mutant from Mutants. Yeah. And uh, that cat was unnatural. She would stay there. She, Walking out there and out of nowhere, you would just jump and two meters poof, <laughs> here. So we would call that cat a uh, mutant. And so that cat, I would uh, 
probably dressed as kind of related to a mutant or something. But we had a cat, a cat that was all black, and uh, she has uh, she had a, uh, a temper almost like a dog. That's why I would dress her as a dog. Yeah, I would dress as a dog, and also because it was it would be very funny. And then Pintada, I think I would just paint her. The, you but know, not with battery acid. Yeah. What? Not with battery acid. For sure, not with battery <laughs> acid. Yeah, and then um, the Branca because she was white. I don't know. Just paint, uh, paint the lips. I don't know. <laughs> but for sure, I would uh, be a mutant, and uh, Britannia would be dressed. That should be uh, probably if I would have to take it to a carnival. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Like, no, yeah, you're it's welcome. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told you I talked too much. No, no I heard so like, much. Yeah. <laughs> How much drive that you have? have. And for example, we have uh, lots of activists in Mindelo. I'm, I'm an activist, actually. and uh, But you would find lots of activists in Mindelo that very often when they see lots of dogs destroying a bin or that you put trash close to a bin and dogs will destroy it, yeah. they will publish that on the Facebook call, to uh -huh. call the mayor attention that that's a problem. Yeah. So it's very often fun this. And now in Praia as well they do basically the same and all the islands. And uh, as I travel all the islands, the island that I found out that I couldn't see any trash rolling on the street actually was Brava. Brava, I think, for me, was the most clean island I haven't been. And uh, Midelo, we try to keep it clean, and we're doing quite a good job. Yeah. But uh, when you go to uh, the neighborhood, small neighborhoods, uh, yeah. you'd sometimes find trash, little trash there. Yeah. But, uh, but we have a huge sense of community, so sometimes we gather the community to clean the area and surrounding. And so And we have some days that uh, all Midelo is doing that as well. That's and for great. example, me, I was part of a. Pro I'm still part of a project that we are cleaning uh, a place that we go for swim. It's uh, close to uh, the Lachina Beach, mm. but the other part is actually the alternative to Lachina Beach. That there is no sand. It's basically rocks there, but there's a small artificial pool there, and we are removing all the sand there to uh, bring it back to its old okay. life as a colonial place. Because mm. before it was really a pool. But when they build uh, a shipyard, a big shipyard that we have yeah. called Kabanaf, they throw a lot of uh, sand there. And uh, now we have to, uh, we are taking all the sand, try to remake it as it was. Well, not as it was, but better than it was. Yeah. For and then bring, give it back to the people, mm. because the country is people. It's not land. The country yes. is all about the people. Yeah. So uh, we are trying to that and also on the mean process because education is something that we still have to improve as well, especially political education. There is lots of people that m I would say m mostly of the, the uh, more than 60% of the people take uh, the uh, political as almost as a football team. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is no good for the development of a, of a country. Because uh, uh, you sh I'm aware that maybe you have your preference for which party you would vote for, but you shouldn't be blind. And when there is something bad, you have to say, hey, I vote for you, so pay attention, do this right. That's a really good way of looking at it. Yeah, I, I think you're going to have like a, I've learned something. On, on top of uh, your hundred careers or skills, <laughs> now you're going to be a politician. So. Uh, I, I thought about it one time. Uh, I after this last election, now nah, I said now nah, I, I will try to change people's mind, not to do what I want to, but to think better. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Like, no, yeah, you're it's welcome. Been a pleasure. Yeah. Me yeah. too. We it's really enjoyed. Yeah. yeah I, I told you I talked too much. No, no I heard so like, much. Yeah. <laughs> Same woman gave birth. And not the, fortunately not the same woman. <laughs> but yeah, there I, but I, there is actually a, some case that we had the same woman with more than 20 kids. Cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, how? Yeah. But yeah. And also I had an uncle with two wives. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Like, no, yeah, you're it's welcome. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. We really enjoyed it.
Yeah. Yeah, okay. I told you I talked too much. No, no I said so much. Yeah.